said Cassie's lawsuit, which was filed in November of 2023 and then was quickly settled overnight, it did open the floodgates. But in that complaint, Jake, she details an incident that she alleged happened in March of 2016 at a hotel in Los Angeles. She claimed in her lawsuit that she was physically assaulted by Diddy. Sean Diddy Combs has broken records with the amount of times his name had been mentioned in the media since his homes were raided by law enforcement in connection with a federal sex trafficking investigation. They gate this on a street uh, near the Beverly Hills area. Of course, we're following it very closely on Live Now from Fox. And of course, we were watching this. We didn't know exactly what we were seeing at the time. So this is just a little bit ago as they, you can see a crowbar to get through this gate initially as well. The long guns and a multitude of people as you'll see, they'll zoom out a little bit just to see the amount of force they are using to get inside this home. And of course, the complex in which this home sits is a very expansive one for the American rapper and producer. You can see them checking inside of a vehicle. We don't know exactly what is involved, if Diddy's even there. We don't know a ton of information about this at all, but this was dramatic video coming in of the Los Angeles home there raided by Homeland Security. Some of those images there on the backs of them. We also saw uh, other images. I want to uh, kind of quickly move to what else we saw as people were led away, potentially in custody. Don't know who these individuals are, if they're related to Diddy in any way, but you can see them a dramatic video from our Sky Fox team there in Los Angeles as we continue to cover this. And our Fox 11 team is there on the ground right now as we speak. Let's take you out to some of their coverage here as we follow this developing story out of Los Angeles. And then detain those three people inside. We haven't seen any signs of P. Diddy himself. Again, we're hearing that he is possibly in New York, uh, but several people inside the home that uh, will surely be questioned. Uh, it's a very chaotic scene when all of this happened. Uh, lots of, um, of neighbors wondering what's going on, of course, and uh, we'll keep you updated. But it's definitely going to be quite a scene here for the remainder of the day. When you see this number of law enforcement agencies coming together, making this type of raid to such a big, high-profile mansion like this, in a neighborhood like this as well, this is very thought out, methodical, planned out for days. So they base this on a number of information gathering that they've received and evidence or what they're looking for. So clearly, this is not something they do lightly. They really go th through the process of making sure that everything is ready before they conduct a raid like this. So yes, this took a lot of planning for all these multiple agencies to come together to actually now conduct a type of raid like this, as you're seeing right now with this street also uh, shut down for the time being, because Haley, you could see the perimeter has been set up in that neighborhood to keep just the public back from the work that's being done. And there you have the shot from Sky Fox. Again, these heavily armed vehicles right next to all those luxury cars you are you see a Porsche, a G-Wagon, so many luxury cars right there on that property. So it is a very differing uh, juxtaposition there uh, of what you're seeing. But look at this mansion here in Holmby Hills where the raid is taking place. Again, we don't know what exactly they're looking for, who they're looking for. But again, this could possibly be linked to a sex trafficking investigation involving rapper Sean Combs, the music executive. But as you heard from Haley right there, she believes and she's been hearing that we do not think that Sean Combs is on that property at home right now. He may be in New York as this raid is being conducted. But we do know from our reporting that over the course of the year already, just as early as uh, March this year. There have been several lawsuits filed against Sean Combs, so clearly this could be part of it. We are not sure at this point. But again, Stu, if you could hear me, what are you seeing right now in terms of uh, your point of view? Well, again, we saw some of those uh, officers right there at that one of the back houses. They did bring a ladder in. They were they they actually went out and brought that ladder into that property. You see it right there, and then they brought another ladder. So there's probably something inside this building right here that three states working in tandem, and they did not tell the officers who they were raiding. They went in tactical as they were instructed to. They didn't know they was raiding Diddy's house. The higher-ups didn't tell anybody because they knew with Diddy being a...
fed informant that he had people in the force and they wanted to make sure that went through legit. So they ain't tell nobody whose houses they was going to. And that's why you see the guns. That the cops didn't know that it was Diddy's house over there in Beverly Hills around the corner from uh, uh, the Playboy Mansion. They didn't know until they seen the kids. Ray J was reluctant to answer any questions about Diddy's infamous parties. Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? <laughs> if Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or sex. That's all that happens at Diddy parties. I hope it was for money because arguing about who's going to put the strap on on is... <laughs> That can be a very uncomfortable situation. You know, we're going to pray on it. Praise the Lord. You know? Amen. Uh, it seems like you can't say no to Diddy the way he's the way he's putting it out. Like, there's a lot yeah. of people like, why didn't he say no? Yeah, that, that you don't go. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't go. <laughs> well, why go? They going to drug you. Lace, yeah. You gonna ask for a glass of water? It's gonna be laced with that toothy. Let the let the good times roll. <laughs> like if I knew that there's a possibility that I might get raped and drugged if I go to this party, and I go anyway, I just wish they would tell all these little niggas the truth. You know, when they court them with the record deals and the contracts and the chains and the car. A nigga doing drugs in the ATL, the nigga at least excuse himself, go to the bathroom or some shit. Niggas in Hollywood just do the drugs right in front of you and act like ain't shit happened. You in the middle of a goddamn meeting. They, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the movie with you and then we're gonna, we're gonna go back. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited in a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms and you fuck around and look in the wrong room and shit. Nick, come here, come here. Is that two niggas kissing? Is one of them niggas Professor Obi? One comment that Ray J has made about Diddy is regarding the resurfaced video of Diddy physically assaulting ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. I've seen her a few times and um, I prayed for her. And I think that, well, I guess that was so old, but I think she she's gotta be at a better place. What, it's five, it's like ten, nine years, right? But I just still want her to know that I, 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 um, I just, I'm so sorry. That's, this is not okay. I got a daughter and I got a sister and a mom. You let us all down, bro. Like when you get to a certain level of the game and everybody will tell you at the top spot. In this club, I don't give a f if y'all, none of y'all made money with me. We're all leveling up, right? There's no mistakes, but that is, there's no, that's not okay. Like, there's nothing you can do to get back in that club that you've been working towards, that everybody's been making sure they've been walking the right path. Whatever mistakes they make, they grow. That is some like demonic, like, that's not welcome here, bro. See, what, I, hurts what, me, I, what I respect about what you've said so far on it, because when TMZ catches you, they just randomly catch you walking through an airport or walking down the street. You said, I think a lot of people are just trying to understand it, understand what it is and what it's not. And this was before the video went off. And I thought that that was fair because you weren't saying, we don't know, we don't believe. And you also weren't throwing them under the bus. I think you were being very fair because to many of us who grew up watching Puff as an intern, 
as a young exec, then a bad boy producer, then a talent, then to put on for the culture, you, then own me, everybody. But like, I mean, he, at, he was the like, blueprint. Look, like, look at all, this. He was the all, blueprint for doing all this. You get what I'm saying? Like you said, have fun, have the white parties, do all that, but then also be swagged out and create for the culture. So like, it has been hard for a lot of people to digest, right? Because in many ways, as you say, he let us down. He let the culture down because this is somebody that we all looked up to and, and in many ways want to become as an executive who also has a swag on himself. When you see the video, do you recognize your friend, that rage, that behavior? Do you recognize that? In a space that we're all trying to get to, that's not acceptable to do. And um, it's not okay. I mean, it might be forgivable in the sense of a spiritual realm of life or forgive everybody, but it's unforgettable. And that's where you just draw the line on friendship and hanging out and, and supporting and being cool. It's like, niggas, it's done, you know, and that's it. Yeah, that video was out of pocket, man. It should never get to that point where you stumping a female, man. It's not okay, man. And it's not, and it's not something that niggas can just take lightly, you know? Cannot do that. Not okay. Niggas is not cool. Period. You knowing Diddy personally, was you surprised when you seen that video? Heartbreaking. And shameful and unacceptable. I've never seen nothing like that. I've never seen nothing like that in the, in the history of my life. I don't know what kind of demon you are, but you know, somebody need to motherfucking form an exorcism fast. It, there's no there, there, there's no place in, in that. And for somebody like me or anybody to say what I'm saying, they better not have had something like that happen. You get what I'm saying? Because now they even put their whole self at risk with being honest. You know what I'm saying? It's like people watch these reality shows and you see certain people arguing and shit get a little tense right on reality but there's a there's a certain level of where you don't go you get what i'm saying and this and that just do not go together it just doesn't you can't compare this of you know a, a back and forth verbal whatever it is in a sense of having a disagreement right and, and even getting too loud at this point is not even okay. But that is way on another page. Combs has a history of violent and dangerous behavior toward women and his employees at Papa Entertainment. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer. And he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this, guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood, yes, they have named other artists, claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower. Hello, everyone. Um, until further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that. Um, for security reasons, my family, friends, and everyone close to me it just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of. And, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just gonna pause on everything until we know the 
it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love. I mean, I get that he's an influential and powerful figure, but no amount of money or influence can make you turn a blind eye to a life or death situation. But hey, that's just me and my common sense talking.